because it's a red dot with a circle around it. Which we couldn't see in Sedona because the light was, <laughs> was boring bit, into our eyes. Oh, glary, yes. Yes, it was All hard right. to see that. You ready with the clapper? I'm ready with the clapper. So, here we go. And... <laughs> oh. Action. Action. So, we are in Sacramento this time. We are not in Sedona any longer. You just not there. And today we're playing with Amsterdam acrylic paints. Now we have played with these a lot before, but the difference now is these little 20 mil tubes. You want to hold two? Cause I can't hold more than two at a yes. time evidently. These, these little babies, 20 mil tubes, we're going to give, <laughs> we're going to give them away. Uh, so da, 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 da. <laughs> it's like Pac-Man, <laughs> it's Pack paint Pack paint Yes. So for every $15 you spend starting today, December 13th, 2023, we're going to give you one of these 20 mil tubes. Now here's the best part. There are 90 colors in this line. 90 colors. 90 colors. Some are opaque, some are transparent, some are semi-transparent and some are semi-opaque. Just and in case you're afraid of commitment. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to, actually, we're going to talk a little bit about, we've talked about in the past, the difference between opaque and not and why that matters. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today and show you some options for working with this paint. It's 20 mil. It's nice. It's an, an amount. It's not, you don't have to feel like you're making a commitment when you get one of these right. because there's enough to use and you don't feel like you're going to waste it or it's going to dry out before you get a chance to use it. So again, we'll give you one tube for every $15 you spend on products other than gift certificates. And the warehouse will handle all of that. You don't have to ask. There's no super secret scroll code. You don't have to do anything. We'll just take care of it and we'll send them. Will you send peasy. me some? Sure, why not? Will you send me my favorite color? Absolutely. You know what it is? Blue. Grayish blue. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> you were close. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go have yeah, some Yeah, let's go have some fun with some some uh, fear of commitment pain. There you go. <laughs> All right, then. Here we go. <laughs> this is a number 12 watercolor tag that Barb has graciously added a pattern to with her mini ink blender tool. And this grayish blue, and yes, that is the name of the color, grayish blue paint. So the stencil, the pattern on the background. And our objective is to show you in this quick video, is to show you the difference between translucent and semi-translucent paints and how, and opaque paint and how that looks over a pattern like this to further educate you on the difference between transparent, semi-transparent and opaque colors. Yes. And don't forget that pattern, that stencil is named Stepping Stones. Oh yes. And this is named Stepping Stones. Barb is giving me the evil eye off camera. She's trying to make sure that I remember all the things I'm supposed to remember. And she's probably That's also it. saying to herself, this is why I like to use a script, which I always tell her is not necessary. So uh -huh. anyway, but I digress. What works for you doesn't <laughs> work for me. So this color is permanent red violet and it has a square on the bottom of the tube that is an open square and that means it is a translucent color transparent system. transparent color sorry and the next color that we're going to use is manganese blue it has an open square with a line through it which means it is a semi-transparent color and we're going to see how these two colors look when layered over this pattern and then lastly we're going to use the tube of why is this in foreign languages? It's the top line. It should, it should Ultramarine be. violet. Yes. And it has a closed up square, which means it is opaque. So we're starting with the first transparent color. You are right there. Oh, phew. God, it's so much pressure. Okay. And this long stem botanical floral foam stamp. Yeah, I have no idea what the name of that is. Sorry. No, we don't know what the name of it is. It's okay. It's all right. We're adorable. Right. So I'm using the gel plate as a uh, stamp pad to get a nice even coating of the whatever color I said this was. And I'm going to stamp it over this pattern, the stepping stones pattern. So you can see how well you can see that grayish blue through this transparent color. Permanent violet. Ooh, 
Look at that, How Barb. How pretty is that? Now, as a little, um, another suggestion while we're doing this, we have a pile of wet paper towels right here. When we're using paint on the foam stamps, we place them face down into the wet paper towels so the paint does not dry on the surface of the stamp. That's real important because if it gets crusty on the surface of your foam stamp, they won't work as well. So stick them in the wet paper towels until you can wash them. All right, so you can see here that you can see that stepping stone pattern very clearly through the transparent paint color. The next color that I'm going to go to is the semi-transparent paint color. That's the manganese blue. We're going to put that out here, Barb. And we're going to roll the brayer off onto a clean piece of paper so that we can get rid of all that other color. You know what you have there? The beginnings of a background. What I have here is your Christmas card. Awesome. <laughs> Boy, am I looking forward to receiving that. You make me laugh. I can't hold the camera still. And I'm not putting anything else on it. I'm just going to put this in an envelope and say Merry Christmas. Oh, as long as there's something for me to look forward to. You're so mean. You didn't even comment about the fact that I mailed you your own card last time we were here. Oh, I know. You didn't even say anything to me. I stole her card that she made and I mailed it to her. I have to laugh. I think you were in Italy when I received that card, which is probably why. But probably. I, I thought, I cannot believe she took my card and then sent it I to me. I sent it to her. It was a nice card. It I was a great card. I couldn't have made a better one myself, so I stole it and I mailed it to you. And with a sentiment, something like, "Here's be since you never mail me cards, I'm mailing you your own. Yeah, you heard it here first. She guilts me about cards all the time. She's really good about them. I, on the other hand, not so much. I don't know what she's doing with all these cards she makes. She makes tons them. of cards and sends them to no one. I keep them. I use them for a bunch. Of, what are you looking at there? I wasn't filming that. This is, stay with me, Barb. You got to multitask. This is, I don't know what this is called, but if, if I was going to rename it, I would call it cockle shells. I think that one is named cockle shells. I think it might be. I, I think it might be. Flatten it out this way a little bit so that we can see the whole thing. There, you there go. we go. Now oh, we have and by the way, uh, Barb and I both grew up in New England, and these uh, long stem floral foam stamps were inspired by the wildflowers of New England. That's right. Which is why we both know that these are cockle shells. Yeah, that's right. Well, you're better at identifying them than me. I mean, dead people are better than me at identifying <laughs> them, but that one I did remember the name of. This one you do. So <laughs> now this is that semi transparent paint, and we're going to see how that goes over that grayish blue background. So here we've got a second stamp. Now, I have to say that the light versus dark colors that you use will also make a difference in how well they show up. Uh, but look at that. I mean, look at that. So even though that is a semi-transparent paint, you can still see the stepping stones pattern right through it. Maybe a little less than this one, but... Pretty well. well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, in the light of day, both of those look reasonably transparent to me. Somebody who is an expert at paint would probably be able to tell the difference that one is a semi-transparent and the other is more transparent. But that all has to do with the pigment that goes into making up the colors, is that correct? Yeah, the pigment is gonna be uh, transparent or opaque or semi-transparent no matter what uh, viscosity you have it in. So whether you have it in fluid acrylics or tube paints or whatever, it is the pigment, it is the manganese blue itself um, that, that uh, determines that, yeah. So now we have this purple. Look at this, Barb. I'm going to use the Baron. Woo, look at you go. I tell everybody I, would, I never use this tool, so I'm just using it to keep you on your toes. All right. Okay. I'm paying attention. There we go. <laughs> Oh, look at that, Barb. It's pulling all the paint off. That's what we were looking for. Look at that, Barb. This is going to go in the envelope with your Christmas oh, card. Oh, <laughs> I am living the high life. <laughs> all right, so here comes our opaque color. This is ultramarine violet, and we're going to roll that out over here. And by the way, who has a better time than us? Nobody. And look, who makes better roll-off sheets than us? Look That's at right. that. It has the beginnings of, honestly, I have... I use the rice paper for roll-off sheets all of the time, and I always have backgrounds that I can start playing with, and then I rip that up, and I cover surfaces with it. It's great. Yeah, totally. I like them. I save them for that as well. I'll layer a stencil over something like that and make some collage paper. Okay. 
So we got good coverage on this. This is an opaque color. When we stamp this there, we should not be able to see much, if anything, through it. So here's our opaque color. It has a solid box on the paint tube on the Amsterdam acrylic standard series acrylic 20 mil tubes those babies are like penny candy i love them they're like the candy that you used to get out of the well you and i are old enough to remember the candy oh, you got yeah. out of the jars and i have them i line them up i lay them out i look at them oh look at that it is in fact pretty darn opaque look at that not to interrupt your penny candy story no 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 but... i mean i love candy we used to go to the Cape Cod and we'd get like a dollar in a basket to go through the penny candy store. And we would have a lot in the basket. And yeah. and With a buck. You can't eat these, but they are tasty colors. That's for sure. Look at that. Yeah. So that's pretty opaque. You can't see the stepping stones patterns through that very much. So with that said, I want to show you a last color. This is also opaque. It is Persian rose, but it is lighter than the grayish blue pattern. So there is something to be considered with contrast and value because this is so much lighter than the grayish blue pattern. It is opaque, but I think that we may still see a little bit of the pattern through it because it's so much lighter. So let's see what happens with that. All right, we'll get that purple off the brayer. By the way, you were right. It is definitely better to use the gel plate for an ink pad than it is wor even working on the nonstick craft sheet. You just get a smoother layer of color. Yeah, you get a smoother layer. Plus, then you can print the um, mm -hmm. the cleanup sheets and 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 use them. You know, then you're not wasting any paint. I, I hate wiping the paint up off the table and then throwing it out. So this way, uh, when I print the cleanup sheet um, and this one. I can use them as base for collage. Okay, so now I'm going to do this same uh, one, whatever that's called. Yeah, no idea. And I'm going to put this over the, uh, the pattern, and we'll see if uh, we can, in fact, see through it or not. And you want to make sure you get a good coverage of the paint on the stamp. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah, you kind of want to be equal in what you do, yeah? Yeah. So we'll put, I'm going to put this one down here so we can really see it. Okay. So that is also opaque, but you can see the pattern a little bit through it. The stepping stone pattern, just a little bit through it. You can see it, uh, not anywhere near as much as these, uh, transparent or semi-transparent, but for, uh, the point of speaking about, um, thickness, if I take a palette knife, even though this color is lighter, if I take a palette knife of this Persian rose and I lay it on here real thick, like butter. <laughs> There's the New England accent for you. There, you do not see the pattern through it. So there is something to be said for the thickness of the paint application. So here with this opaque color, you do not see that pattern through it at all. But the layer of paint that was on the stamp itself was thinner um, because it was spread out onto the stamp and then we pressed it. So here you see, you can't see through it at all. So uh, the heavy, how heavy or thin you apply your paint will also make a difference in transparent versus opaque. So, I hope you found that helpful, Barb. It's always very helpful. It, 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 you can't, uh, for me, it's making certain that it's impressed in my mind, and that way going in when I'm working with colors, it helps me to understand what I should expect. Yes, especially with layering. So, if you're gonna be putting stamps on top of a pattern, you need to know which colors are gonna allow the pattern to show through and which colors are not, and if it's a light color over a dark pattern, you have to apply the paint thicker. So there you go. Bingo. Yeah. All right then. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. And go. And go. <laughs> so we've played, we've showed you some things and here's the deal. Whether you take transparency or the lack thereof into account when you're playing, is if you're all you're doing is playing and it's kind of irrelevant to what you're doing, then you don't even have to pay attention and it really doesn't make any difference. But if it matters, now you would know a little bit about how that works and 
how you can use it and why it matters. And if you throw all that information to the wind and just go with serendipity, you have the wabi-sabi, the beauty of imperfection. That, and I am so good at being imperfect. You're an excellent example of imperfection. <laughs> there you go. I'm an ace at it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. All right. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.